Kuzu Zangpo and a very warm welcome to Bhutan this week. Our top stories. His Majesty the King granted a shikhada to the new Home and Cultural Affairs Minister and the new constitutional post holders. The government will reconsider the policy on import of second-hand electric vehicles and not electric vehicles. And the Secretary of External Affairs Ministry of India said, India don't have power surplus. In fact, India is desperately energy short. His Majesty the King granted the shikhada to the new Home and Cultural Affairs Minister and the new constitutional post holders at the Tashi Chazong. The Member of Parliament from Bongo Chapcha constituency, Dawa Gelson, was formally appointed as the Home and Cultural Affairs Minister. Limpo Dawa Gelson replaces Limpo Damche Doji, who will now be the new Minister for Foreign Affairs. The former Foreign Minister Rinzen Doji will now function as the Member of Parliament from Sarbang constituency. His Majesty also offered Tashi Kada to Kile Yangsum, the former RCSC Commissioner, who is now the Chairperson for Anti-Corruption Commission and Election Commission's former Commissioner, Chogil Daugurunzin, who is now the Chief Election Commissioner. Tsering Kyazang, the former Pemagasal Zongdo, also received Tashi Kada for his new appointment as the Auditor General. Meanwhile, the former eminent member to the National Council, Karmadam Chunyudup, and former Auditor Jamso also received Tashikada for their new appointments as commissioners to the Anti-Corruption Commission. His Majesty also offered Tashikada to Diki Pema, who was reappointed as Election Commission's Commissioner and the former Chief Executive Officer of the National Housing Development Corporation, Ugin Saong, who was appointed as the other commissioner for the Election Commission. Dikichorindoji, BBS News. Prime Minister Singh Tobge clarified that the government will reconsider the policy on import of second-hand electric vehicles and not electric vehicles. During mid the press, the Prime Minister said that they cannot ban the import of electric vehicles as they are doing well. In its annual report, Anti-Corruption Commission stated that the government order on allowing import of second-hand electric vehicles violated the provisions of the constitution and the rules and procedures for imports from third countries 2001. The cabinet wanted to discuss, reconsider the import on second-hand e-cars based on the fact that ACC had questioned its legitimacy. We've made it very clear that it is legal, it is within the government's authority to allow the import of second-hand e-cars. This has been a stand in the parliament, this has been a stand outside the parliament. However, when an honourable institution such as the ACC deems and raises questions on the legality of import of second-hand e-cars, we decided that we will discuss it. So this is an agenda that will be discussed. It was also revealed that charging stations will be installed in Timpu, Paro and Punakha. Minister for Information and Communication said, the dealer of electric cars, Thunder Motors, will be installing five charging stations. He also said that from the government side, efforts are being made and by August, the government will install more charging stations. JICA has also offered five quick charging equipment to the government, but the installation cost has to be borne by the government. The dealer will be installing quick charging stations, about five of them and the stations have been identified and I'd like to convey to you today that these five stations will be centered not only in Thimpu but as well in Paro and Punaka. The first one that we have identified is at Paro International Airport. The other station that we have identified is at uh, Centenary Farmers Market. We have discussed with Timbu uh, Tomde, uh, Tompon, and uh, the third one will be at uh, Chujom, because Chujom falls uh, towards, the, towards the other side, towards the uh, Paro side only, and since it, it falls under Paro Zongha, discussions are going on at the moment uh, with uh, Paro Zongda, and uh, fourth and fifth will be at Punaka, one at Kurutang in the town, and the other one just past Tilagang. Then, to cater to the immediate need of these uh, 
mostly the taxi drivers. The dealer has already uh, started giving free of charge charging facilities from his showroom only. That has been started and about, I, I think about uh, two weeks ago only they have identified that place and uh, well, like people, uh, taxi drivers, electric taxi, taxi drivers are charging their vehicles free of charge from the station. To limit number of tours availed by officials from the Punachangshu hydropower project, Economic Affairs Minister Norbu Wangshu said, several steps were being taken including shifting the headquarters of Punachangshu hydropower project authority to the site. At the moment, the headquarters is in Timpu. Audit report for the period of 2012 and 2013 highlighted that several top project officials had gone on tour for as many as 200 to 336 days in a year. Some of the reasons for availing tours Limpo said was because the officials were handling two projects simultaneously, Punachangshu 1 and 2. I had also instructed uh, the management to put in place systems and mechanisms to rationalize uh, tours, uh, such as that uh, there should be a mandatory tour report needs to be submitted uh, after the completion of the tour. And uh, also there had been a practice to combine tours with leave and wanted to uh, instructed them not to combine tours with the, with the leaves because that provides an incentive for people to take tours so that the leave can be extended. And I'd also in instructed that uh, to implement what was already there strictly that uh, in a month, six days in in-country tour and uh, five days outside uh, in a month. Bhutanese consumers are finding it difficult to get refilled LPG cylinders in recent days. The problem aggravated after 75,000 cylinders were taken to India to assess its status after the cylinders had surpassed their lifeline of 10 years. And in the meantime, the government is urging the consumers not to hoard more than two cylinders while the commercial outlets are being advised to use the commercial cylinders. 200,000, a little more than 200,000 cylinders in circulation. And when the audit had conducted the, the audit, they found that 35% of the cylinders are expired, which means they have uh, completed their 10 years of life. And unless and until we requalify them, retest them for, for their usability, we cannot uh, put them back to circulation, which means 75,000 of the cylinders are out of uh, circulation. So we are putting in a lot of effort to uh, requalify these uh, cylinders. This testing are d being done in a place, uh, Siliguri. So the, our estimates are that it will take about three months to requalify these cylinders. The Royal University of Bhutan will relook into the curriculum for class 10 and above in order to prepare students and channel them to a gainful employment after their courses. The Foreign Minister Dam Chudoji, who is also the University Council's chairperson, said that there is a mismatch between the skills imparted and the job market. There is a mismatch between the skills uh, uh, the uh, education that uh, our youth have received in schools and colleges and the skills that are needed to get um, gainful employment. Um, definitely there is a mismatch and uh, uh, it is time that we relook into all these uh, uh, curriculums, especially at the uh, tertiary level so that um, they are prepared uh, for diverse employment, you know, uh, not just getting a degree. Office of the Attorney General will now handle the case of illegal transaction of 4.74 acres of dry land in Trongsa, where Viewpoint Resort is built. The Anti-Corruption Commission has handed over the case to OAG. The former Trongsa Zongdal Habduji is alleged to have manipulated the documents and transferred the land to his wife, Karma Sitim Dalma. The controversy surfaced after the Trongsa Zongok acquired private land from 33 households to construct Institute of Language and Cultural Studies at Taxi in 2003 and 2004. One of the owners who was compensated 45,000 mutram found that she was landless after she cross-checked with the Zongok. She found more than two acres of her land was in Karma Chitim Dalma's name. Another allegation against Labdoji is again of manipulation of documents of 2.2 acres of dry land in Drakman Gyuk during the same period. Here too, he is said to have transferred the land to his wife's name. The Secretary of External Affairs said India don't have power surplus. In fact, India is desperately energy short. 
Earlier, an Indian media quoted power minister saying that there was excess power in India. It led to several discussions in Bhutan as to what would mean to hydropower development in the country with the objective of selling surplus power to India if India already had excess power. This statement from the Indian External Affairs Secretary laid all fears to rest. The Secretary, who was on a site visit to PHP 1 and 2, said India is looking to maximize the sources of energy. She said with the population size as large as theirs, having power surplus is a distant dream. I don't think there's any issue at all as far as the projects that are being done in collaboration between Bhutan and India. There is an intergovernmental agreement that exists which confirms that the power generated at these will be available for purchase by India and India has guaranteed that we will purchase this. She was also accompanied by the Joint Secretary North of the External Affairs Ministry. He said the revised cost has been finally approved after going through various experts, technical and government approvals. The cost escalations for the PHPA has been kept at a reasonable limit and fully justified. Puna one project is, even after escalation, is less than 8 crores per megawatt. And the Pune 2 project, even after proposed expected es escalation, will be in the range of 7 crores per megawatt. And these are extremely competitive rates uh, anywhere else in South Asia. I am very happy to say that on 21st of July, the Union Cabinet of India approved the revised cost estimate of Pune Sang Chu 1 of 9,376 9, crores. So I think we are on track and we will complete the project on track. PHP 1 was running low on budget for last few months with the original estimated cost of 52 billion newton already exhausted. For Kim Sang Tinle in Wonderful Drang, Doji Tema for BBS News. According to Annual Audit Report 2014, the Bank of Bhutan lacked objectivity and transparency in the processes of identifying buildings for the office space and negotiating rent for the selected properties. There were no documented records of discussions between the building owners and the bank. The report says the Bank of Bhutan had not invited quotations for hiring of office space at various locations in Thimpu, depriving competitive prices. The bank's management had maintained that direct negotiations were more viable, but there were no documentary evidences to show direct negotiations with building owners were carried out objectively and transparently. Audit findings showed the bank did not have clear basis for fixing the rent for hiring of ATM spaces at various locations in Thimpu. The rents were found to be paid in lump sum amounts. The rent was neither based on square footage of property nor through negotiations. The bank had not invited quotations for competitive rates. According to the report, causes of such irregularities have been attributed to poor enforcement of rules and regulations. The enforcement of procurement rules was found to be apparently affected by inadequate control and monitoring mechanisms. The Bank of Bhutan declined to comment on the issue. Chetan Dupchu, BBS News. With frequent roadblocks at Riutala and box cutting leaving Shemgang disconnected, local leaders of the Zongkak decided to submit the issue to the parliament. The resolution was passed during the recent Zongkak Chokdu. Riutala is about 30 kilometers from Shemgang towards Strongsa, while box cutting is along the Shemgang Gelifu Highway. During the meeting, local leaders said it is time that the Department of Roads comes up with a solution to tackle the perennial roadblocks at Riutala and box cutting. Every year we spend over 2 million ultram for cleaning the block at Riutala. So instead of recurrent expenditure, why not come up with other solutions that would benefit both the government and the people? Every year it's the same problem. I don't know for how long we will have to keep asking for solutions. To solve the problem, why not come up with options like building a tunnel as they do in other countries? Others added that the two major roadblocks have adversely affected the growth of ecotourism in the Zonghuk. Shemgang being a tourism hotspot, 
Roadblocks at the two sites have really affected us. If you want to travel to Astrongsa, there's a roadblock at Ryutala. Same is the case at box cutting while traveling to Kelefu. But most importantly, promoting tourism in the Dzongkak is affected. Tourists are not able to come even if they want to because of roadblocks. Bus service has been stopped and there are not many vehicles plying this route. The blocks have really affected us. To this, officials from the Department of Roads said, compared to the past, things have improved. With machines stationed at the sites, works are carried out to clear the block as soon as possible. A geological study at Ryutala was also carried out. Two Japanese experts came and carried out a study at Ryutala block site, but nothing concrete has come out of it so far. They said the landslide happens from an area about a kilometer uphill. It will take one to two years for the area to stabilize. We know that a tunnel through the valley would be a good idea, but we should also look at the budget expects to construct one. I would also like to inform that the ministry is aware of the problem. <coughs> However, with the local leaders unconvinced, they decided to forward the issue to the parliament through Zongkak Thoktu. For Pema Samdrup in Jemgong, Sonomongdi, PBS News. Well, that's all we have for this week. Thank you for joining us. Until next time, it's goodbye from me.